Hi, I'm Ava and I work at Persons Healthy Materials Lab. And I'm joined today by Elsie Lazaro Vasquez. And she is our winner, our Role Models 2020 winner. And she's going to tell us a little bit about the project that she won with. Hi, Eva. Thank you for the invitation today. So um, I'm going to talk about the project I presented last year. And uh, this project is called Microelectronics for the Circular Economy. And that was part of my research I did during my master's at UC Davis. I graduated last year. Um, and well, this project was inspired or had the aim to address a global environmental issue such as e-waste. And here we can see that 50 million tons of e-waste is discarded each year in the world and only 20% of it is recycled. Furthermore, an average, of, um, an average person in the US and Germany creates 20 kilograms of e-waste in their lifetime. So this was something I wanted to address because I was working, my research uh, had place at the intersection of biodesign, wearable technology, and digital fabrication. So I used a lot of electronics for making my projects. Um, so then because of that, I consider it important to understand the life cycle of electronic components. But I added uh, one variation in the design process that was this env envisioning the idea of using bio-based materials to embed common electronics instead of using plastic, um, plastic as a material where electronics are embedded. Uh, from there, I noticed different environmental impacts that took place in the different phases of the life cycle of these electronics. So I created this microelectronics life cycle. So how it would look like if we kind of like um, change the, the plastic based material where electronics are embedded. And here it's also a way of showing designers taking an active role in all the phases of the, in the, life, the life cycle. So as part of that, I designed like my own biofabrication process to create, uh, to create micro boards. So I could use this material to laser cut and I can do the enclosures of my, my electronic components, such as you can see here, like cre creating enclosures for an Arduino or even like laser cutting or 3D molding for, uh, for it. Or here you can also see like some examples of like what if it's not really molded but it's later cut um, or even creating um, the a, a micro breadboard where the electronic components could be reused after we are done with our project and the substrate could be composted so something that i did after winning this project the sorry the prize <laughs> by healthy materials lab that i was very happy with um, I also started thinking about like in wearable technologies, how this can also be translated to wearable technologies, to having more flexible materials where electronics or e-textiles could be embedded. And that's where the micro accessories happened and uh, trying to imagine this idea of also embedding e-textiles or flexible textiles or e-textiles into uh, compostable matter. And uh, well, at the end, the micro accessories were presented in different venues, international venues, such as Rome Fashion Week, also uh, 3D Fashion Week in Lima, Peru, or it, and it also won a Best Design Award in a conference, in a wearable computing conference. So it went, all this process and the outcomes of this research were also presented in, uh, in diff with different publications, uh, conference publications. So going farther from that idea, that was the um, microelectronics for the circular economy, it was about understanding or showing this type of, is this way of design to design students and letting them to interact with the materials and actually make um, kind of like have their feedback and have these user studies where we can see if the students find it, um, useful for their own prototyping process and they created different like during a class they created different uh, uh subs like their, their projects and we got like really great feedback from them and from with that feedback 
I was able to create the digital fabrication lifecycle where designers not only use bio-based materials, like trying to understand that not always we will be using bio-based materials for creating prototypes, but also uh, common materials for 3D printing or laser cutting. But having this overview um, allow the students to make different decisions throughout the, the, the life cycle of the prototypes. And finally, I was able to develop an online online calculator so designers could actually see which phases of the life cycle of their prototypes are having the high the highest environmental impact so they can address that by changing some of their choices throughout the design process um, um, well currently um, i am working on the eco materials library which is uh, a project that started also after the the time I won the, the prize and we got we are supported by the TEIF, which is the Green Initiative Fund at UC Davis. So we are able to create a library in our Department of Design where students will be able to see the recipes and they can use these recipes for creating their own materials and in the different design areas and they will be also able to like kind of feature their projects to the world or in their portfolios. And they will see that there are alternative ways that we can use for like how to use healthy materials for the design in all its extent. And well, I'm very happy that and kind of like these uh, role models was uh, something that made me go farther in my research because it's like kind of like we see our work being supported by other venues, which makes it very um, important, I think, in the, the research process of, yeah, an early stage researcher or designer. <laughs>